voluntary groups. Under post-attack conditions voluntary groups would provide vital assistance with feeding and medical aid. St. John's Ambulance Responsible for both offering and spreading the knowledge of first aid. It provides first aid in emergency incidents, gives assistance to the aged and physically handicapped, and helps in hospitals and in welfare work generally. During the 1980s Jean Marden was an area staff officer. Throughout Leicestershire we had approximately 1,250 full-time adults and some 2,300 cadets ranging between the ages 6 and 16. In terms of resources, we had 10 ambulance vehicles and enough stocks of first aid equipment so as each full-time adult could tender first aid. We have a county HQ at Regent Road in Leicester and satellite offices in major towns around the county. The Regent Road office has a basement but nothing that could be used as a shelter. I am aware that reference is made to us in the county defence plans but we never had any formal arrangements with the county council. British Red Cross Society Similar in role to the St. John's Ambulance, during peacetime offered paramedical support. The organisation's post-attack role was to staff the first aid posts. Mrs. Dorothy Pincus MBE has been a fundraiser for the organisation for over 50 years. During the 1980s in Leicestershire we had approximately 1,500 volunteers. We have an HQ in the county on London Road in the city which is staffed during office hours and holds stocks of medical equipment. It didn't have any kind of basement worthy of note. We also had attachment centres in major towns but none of these would have been stuffed other than in a local emergency. We never get involved in any support activity unless called to do so. Women's Royal Voluntary Service WRVS Partly funded by the Home Office, the WRVS would have provided the staff and equipment to operate the emergency feeding stations across the county post-strike. The WRVS in Leicestershire had some 3,500 members and had a county HQ at Milston Lane in Leicester. The Leicester District Office was next door, Leicester itself had some 1,000 members. Each district had an office HQ except Blaby which came under the wing of the Leicester District. I sought the recollections of the 1980s from the then Leicester District Secretary, she requested I did not name her. All of the women were fiercely proud of the uniform and the service. Any hour of the day and night our volunteers were ready to be called out on emergency. I often recall some of the bizarre situations members abandoned to offer their services including one making sure her cap covered her only half-dyed hair. We were thoroughly organized and provided vital food and warmth in most situations in a very short space of time. We held stocks of equipment at Milston Lane in the form of soya boilers, electric heaters, crockery and cutlery to feed approximately 500 people. We also had a healthy stockpile of storable foods including tinned soup and a large supply of tea bags. However, if need be we had an arrangement with the co-op chain for them to open their store to us out of hours if necessary. But what of the organization's readiness for war conditions? Nationally the WRVS had a 1 in 5 scheme. That meant we aimed to feed down from national to local level to at least 1 in 5 women what actions they should take to protect their families in the event of nuclear attack. Exercises were held to test our readiness and we had an emergency planning committee which made plans. Was the organization therefore ready to be deployed to feeding posts? I don't think it was necessarily planned to that degree. We would naturally go home to tend to our families and once conditions permitted emerge and make our way to where we thought we would be of most assistance. I think I recall it being suggested we make sure we had things like jigsaw puzzles to keep us amused while we waited to be released from shelter. 
This of course all relied on a significant number of members surviving, but what of the food stocks and equipment? There was no special reinforcement of the building at Milston Lane. The basement was looked at as a possible shelter but considered too damp and inadequate for the purpose. Even if it had been suitable it would have relied on the Russians being kind enough to schedule their attack between office hours. But was it all taken seriously by members? I think we tried to participate in exercises and the like to the best of our ability. I think such is the role of the WRVS we were used to just getting on with it. I think the thought of an attack was just too horrible to contemplate and thus we didn't wish to dwell on it, but needless to say we would have done our best to offer some relief and assistance.